Welcome to Your Strata Property, the podcast for property owners looking for reliable, accurate and bite-sized information from an experienced and authoritative source. To access previous episodes and useful strata tips, go to www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. Hello and welcome. I'm Amanda Farmer and this is Your Strata Property. Nicole Johnston is an academic at Deakin University in Victoria, specialising in strata title research. Nicole's research focuses on the rights of property owners in the strata context, and Nicole has a particular interest in issues arising in the early years of strata schemes. Nicole's education background is in the social sciences, psychology and criminology, and law. Prior to working in the university system, Nicole was a practicing property lawyer. Today, I am delighted to welcome Nicole Johnston of Deakin University. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda, and this great opportunity to discuss both my research and to engage with your audience. Yes, thank you so much for being with us. I know it's a busy time of year for you because you have a very exciting conference coming up in Melbourne, which we're all really looking forward to, some overseas academics in the multi-owned properties field coming to visit us. Yes, we do. Yes, that's just a few (laughs) weeks away now, so we're getting its action stations here. (laughs) I know, I know. And I'm just thinking... I think I first met you close to this time last year at the ACAL conference, Australian College of Community Association Lawyers, and I was really taken by your presentation that you gave on what's happening at the point of purchase for strata owners. What information are they or aren't they getting when they're signing that contract to purchase their strata property? And I thought that would be a wonderful topic to have a chat to you about on the show. And I'm going to start by asking you to tell us why is the point of purchase such a critical stage for people who are buying into Strata? Yeah, thanks so much, Amanda. Yeah, it is a very important area for our research. First of all, buying a property that is affected by an owner's corporation or a body corporate is different to buying any other type of property or any other type of residential property. Buyers need to understand that there are responsibilities that flow from buying this type of property. They're both legal responsibilities and all liabilities. And this they flow from being an owner in this property arrangement. And they also need to be aware of how well the owner's corporation or the body corporate is actually functioning. Mm. So that is particular to a property that is actually existing. And I'm going to talk about the difference between properties that have already been created, already exist, and properties that are bought off the plan. Great. So the incorporation of the body corporate or owner's corporation, depending on what state you're living in, and the communal ownership of property adds a complex layer to the due diligence process when buying into a scheme. Mm. So a purchaser really needs to exercise greater caution because of the known challenges that we have seen specifically related to these types of properties. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to really look at and investigate the owner's corporation when we're buying into this type of property. Mm -hmm. If the owner's corporation or the body corporate is dysfunctional, there are many consequences and often these consequences may be negative that flow back to the lot owner who has purchased in as a result. So we have seen a number of situations where the consequences are of a financial nature. Mm. So owners and people buying into these may be exposed to some financial costs Mm. that they haven't previously foreseen. And when you say dysfunctional there, Nicole, what kinds of things are you talking about? There's a number of things and I'm going to go through sure. throughout the interview in a little bit more detail, but we're yep. talking about things like how the financial health of the property is, mm. if the maintenance is up to date, if, is there any repair or building defect issues that need to be looked at, yep. what's the communal health, how healthy is the community, do people get on well within the community and also within the committee, mm. and also things like litigation, is there a lot of litigation or disputes going on within that community. So dysfunction, obviously, or functionality is on a bit of a sliding scale. So, Mm. it just depends on what's going on within that particular scheme. But owners need to be aware and purchasers certainly need to be aware of how functional that scheme is when they're buying into the particular lot or into the particular scheme. Great. So, if a purchaser is buying off the plan then, so they're buying something that actually hasn't been created yet Mm -hmm. and they've actually are getting involved in the contract process, 
So in those situations, the owner's corporation or the body corporate has actually not been created at that stage Mm. um, through the registration process. So you really are unable to determine how well that scheme will function in the future once it is created. Mm. However, an experienced strata lawyer could provide advice about the potential hazards of buying off the plan Mm -hmm. in terms of the types of arrangements that the developer will put in place and also undertake sort of investigations about the particular developer. And Mm. that's really important. Each state has a different process in relation to disclosing information or disclosing the arrangements that the developer is going to put in place. So you have to be mindful that each state varies in relation to that particular aspect. Mm. Just drilling down into getting advice, you've specifically referred to their get advice from a strata lawyer, and I'll ask you to maybe talk to that a little bit more. What advice should a purchaser be getting? Where do they start? What kinds of questions should they be asking? What's this advice that will help them be informed? So, obtaining legal advice prior to the contract signing Mm. from a property lawyer with expertise in strata titling is actually really, really important. An expert lawyer should be able to commence the due diligence process at that stage or at least ensure that there's special conditions put in the contract to ensure that an investigation of the functionality of the body corporate can actually be undertaken. And therefore, if you are not happy with how that particular scheme is functioning, you will be able to get out of the contract. So, A strata lawyer understands what's going on within these schemes and can put those particular processes in place Mm. or those particular conditions in place. And we're saying that's distinct from any other lawyer, I suppose, without expertise in strata, as well as conveyances, which we have here in New South Wales, who aren't lawyers, but are experienced in conveyancing. Correct. And this is some of the research that I've looked at is in relation to conveyances Mm. and the difference between getting legal advice about the owner's corporation and just transferring the property. Mm. A lot of conveyances don't charge a great deal of money to actually go through the contract process, Mm. but their main aim is really to review the contract, advise the purchaser in regards to the conditions of that contract and really transfer or convey the property to you as a purchaser from the seller. Mm. So it's very transactional based and that's why you see that the costs are only around sort of, you know, $1,000, $1,500 for a conveyancer to do that. Mm. I think that opens people up to some problems because I think you need to get some much more deeper advice about some of the common challenges that arise in these schemes. And you'll only do that by having someone who deals with these issues on a day-to-day basis Mm. and strata lawyers or people that are litigators in the strata area who work in firms that can actually advise their conveyancing teams about some of the issues they need to look at is really, really important. Mm. So yes, it's going to cost you more to get that particular advice, but I think in the long run, it could save you a lot. And remember that a property usually is the biggest investment in someone's life. So spending mm. three or four thousand dollars to get the right advice may save you everything in the end. So yeah. it's very, very important, I think, that you actually get someone with real experience in this area to review the contract and, and undertake the due diligence for you. Yeah, absolutely. I don't do conveyancing myself these days. I refer it out. But I did in my past life and as a baby lawyer, did quite a bit of conveyancing. And it's interesting that you say having the expertise not only of a lawyer experienced in strata title law, but a litigator as well. Yes, we would charge our clients more for conveyancing, but that's because we approach these kinds of contracts with the point of view of a litigator. We see and we know what goes wrong, what the fallout is when these contracts aren't properly put together, when the purchaser is not aware of what they're getting into. So yes, we provide detailed advice and we get into the nitty gritty of trying to change contract terms before they've been signed. We come at it with that view of worst case scenario. And some clients love that. Other clients say, no, why should I have to pay double or triple what I'd otherwise be paying a conveyancer. But I agree with you completely, Nicole. It can be penny wise, pound foolish when you take that point of view. Absolutely. And I think also 
people have just got to be a little bit more careful in relation to buying by way of auction as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, great point. So inserting special conditions can become very, very difficult when you're buying something by way of auction. But there's always an opportunity to get a copy of the contract prior to an auction. Hmm. And I would make sure that you go to a lawyer, property lawyer, to have that reviewed um, and for them to do as much due diligence as they can before you go to the auction. Hmm. I think that's really, really important to do that. And in some states, you see a lot of properties sold by way of auction, particularly in Victoria. There's a much higher proportion of property in the strata sector sold by way of auction than any states. Mm. But we're also seeing it in New South Wales. It's very, very high to buy in that way. And I think people are opening themselves up to a lot of problems because they're signing the contract on the day. Mm. And so many of them aren't seeking legal advice before they do that, which is very problematic. Yeah, I've certainly seen that with friends, with family, and even clients who used to come to me after the fact that they'd say, oh, I was at an auction and the contract's been signed and I now want you to do the legal work. And I would say, God, you know, the most important time has now passed, unfortunately. What I do now is purely transactional. The important stuff should have come before getting advice on the property, investigating. As you say, I love that terminology, due diligence. All of that needs to be done before you are signing your name to that contract. Absolutely. And I think, you know, aside from the advice regarding the contract itself, purchasers really need to get specific advice from very key areas in relation to the owners corporation and so I've just jotted down some notes in relation to that. Great. The first big thing I think is the financial health of the owners corporation. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a look at the sinking and or maintenance fund, whether the fund has been funded in accordance with a plan, so a forecasted plan and the extent of any outstanding debts including outstanding levies from other owners is really important to get that information. Yep. So what you're looking for in that regard is whether the owners corporation raises sufficient levies each year to cover the costs. So you want to see the budget, you want to see if they're carrying debt each year and really do want to have a look at that maintenance fund to see that there is definitely money in there ready to expend on capital works. And you want to make sure that the owners corporation doesn't hold meetings quite regularly throughout the year to try and raise special levies Mm. to cover the costs that they haven't forecast. So you want to make sure that there's a really good budget in place that's really been prepared well so that you know everyone is very clear about how much money needs to be raised and what their contribution will be every year and not the sort of ad hoc types of expenditures coming up constantly that people are unaware of. So you just want to have a look back through the budgets and see how the budget's performing, whether there's sufficient funds in that budget, whether additional monies need to be raised constantly. So if you see a scheme where every single year there has to be a special levy raised to cover costs, that could be a concern about you know how things have been put together from a budget perspective. Mm. You also want to see that other owners are paying their dues on time, their levies on time, because problems will arise if there are a number of owners that constantly fail to pay their levies in a timely manner. The money to pay bills must come from somewhere. And if there are insufficient funds in your administrative accounts to pay those expenses, then each owner may have to contribute by way of a special levy for the shortfall. Mm. So people just need to be aware of if you've got a scheme of 100 lots, for example, and you've got 20% of owners that constantly are late in their payment or you've got a number of lot owners who fail to pay, that is going to put more pressure on you from a financial perspective. You've got to make sure that you you are able to cover those costs as well. Mm. So that's one thing you would need to look at in the due diligence process, definitely how the financial health of the owners corporation is going. And could you just touch on there, Nicole, where practically, physically are purchasers looking to get this information? Yes. So this is very interesting because in my research, I spoke to a number of conveyances about you know, do they advise people to go and have a look at where the information is and undertake that sort of process? I was very surprised what I was hearing and that was that none of them have ever done a search to have a look Mm, at the information. That is scary. So, in schemes that actually have a strata manager, yep. oftentimes the records are held by them. So they are the custodians of the records. Mm. They will have all the information that is available. If you are a purchaser, 
in every single state, you are allowed, you have a right to inspect the records of the owner's corporation and you can go to the Australia Manager's office, mm-hmm. get that information and you can get some advice in relation to those particular documents. Mm. If it's a strata scheme without a manager, because you don't have to have a manager, there will be someone on the committee that will have those records and again, you have a right to inspect them. There is a bit of a problem and there is a little bit of a conflict in the legislation in relation to a pre-purchaser, so someone who hasn't signed the contract Mm. as yet. Mm -hmm. Only in some states, and I think for memory it may be only limited to South Australia, um, but most states there is no very clear provision in the legislation that would allow a pre-purchaser to Mm. inspect the records. Mm. But again, that would come back to ensuring that if you had a condition in your sales contract Mm. that you had a strata lawyer right in a a good clause, then they could make sure they could compel the seller to divulge all the records to you so that you can still make those inquiries. Mm. So it does become a little bit problematic, but I still would be very nervous to buy something unless I can have a look at that information. So it would be important to speak to the seller about gaining access Mm. to those records through the manager. I think that's really vital. Yeah. My memory of the New South Wales legislation, and I'm pretty sure this has been carried through in the new act that's just started started is that a lot owner or anyone authorised by the lot owner may inspect the records. So what I see happen regularly is that you have a an email, a fax sent through to the strata manager that is signed by the lot owner that says, I hereby authorise John Smith, who is interested in purchasing my property, to access the books and records. And Correct. that all happens yes. quite smoothly. Yeah, that's right. But you want to make sure that they Mm. will do that. Yeah, for sure. The best way to do that is put it in the contract. Mm. Excellent. You don't want to leave yourself open to not being able to find that information. So, But you would hope that the seller, if they want to sell their Mm. property, that they would be open to, you know, making sure that someone has access to those records and all the records to make sure that they can get everything. But I was very surprised when I was doing my research that a couple of conveyances said to me, where would we tell people to go and do that? Oh, dear. Uh, And they were thinking, you know, maybe consumer affairs or there was some other type of entity that they could use, which was quite alarming to be quite frank. Yes, alarming is the word. And also you say, you know, looking at the records and making sure all the records are there, too often – I have clients who come to me as lot owners who've gone to inspect records for whatever reason and they've said, oh, well, I've got A, B, C and D. And I say, well, what about E, F and G? Oh, I didn't know that that was supposed to be in the records. And it's not unless you have that experience with strata title law that you can pinpoint what is missing. Everything that you've got might look great, but not until you speak to your strata lawyer that you say, well, no, you're supposed to have this following information as well and that is missing and that's a problem. Well, that's right. And you want people to have a look at, you know, the different contracts that are there Mm. in the records to see what type of increases are required, what the duties are in relation to, for example, resident managers. There's a range of information that people don't know that they need that they actually do need. And Mm. to have a specialist Mm. there is the only way to make sure that you're really covering those bases. And I've seen this on numerous occasions. I've done a number of inspections in strata management offices and you can go there and you'll get part of the records. Mm. And it's only through experience that you can say, well, no, I'd like the minutes from these years or I want to have a look at the committee committee meeting minutes or I want to have a look at the contracts or the leases relating to this particular part of the property. Yes. And oftentimes, you know, you won't get the full suite of those records. So it's really important to make sure that you have someone on your side that is really experienced in this area. Mm. And another um, important point that you raised earlier was about the general state of harmony in the building. Is there any litigation going on? Yeah, so that's right. So that's sort of, I probably put that into two categories, the state of harmony within the scheme. Mm. So the records really should give you some indication of how harmonious the community actually is. So you'll be able to see whether there's been breaches of the bylaws Mm. that apply to that particular scheme, whether there's been complaints in relation to any of the lot owners or the behaviour of the lot owners, what type of other legal matters and those sorts of things. They should all be detailed in the minutes or you should be able to see from the records, you usually get a pretty good overview of what's really going on from that particular perspective. Mm. So major noise issues, parking issues, pet issues, all those sorts of matters will be highlighted somewhere through those records and should be very evident to a purchaser or its legal representatives who carefully consider the records. Mm. In relation to more litigation matters, yes, you absolutely need to be aware of how much litigation has been undertaken in relation to that scheme. 
scheme and whether there is any current litigation or pending litigation. And you should seek some advice about the contents or the issues that are affecting those particular litigation matters, especially if you're a new lot owner coming in, because if it's a protracted legal case, you may be up for costs for many years to come. Mm. You need to understand the status of the legal matter, whether there's potential for appeals in relation to any of the matters that have been considered, because there is lots of costs that go with that. Mm. You want to make sure that whether or not there are lot owners or other people that are involved in the scheme that have really real dispute with the owner's corporation or any other lot owners. So you just need to be really aware of what you're getting yourself in relation to, you know, the litigation side Mm. of it as well. It's very important to have a look at the records there. Mm. Thanks for that, Nicole. I think that's a really great high level overview of what potential purchases getting into strata should be looking at. And we might have some listeners out there who are thinking, geez, if only I had known and if only yes, I'd had this sure. guidance before I got in because I'm now in uh, in a hotbed of trouble. Yeah, that's one of the sad part about this is a lot of, especially first-time buyers or first-time buyers into this particular property environment, they will go to a scheme or they will go to you know a development and fall in love with the property. They know yes. that's where they want to live. And there is pressure tactics from real estate agents, as we all have, you know, heard about, that really push people or people feel compelled in order to secure that property that they need to sign that contract straight away. Yes, absolutely. And that's where the danger point is. You know that that's the property for you. You're under pressure to sign. You've been told that there are other people there with, you know, the contract ready to sign and you don't want to miss out on that opportunity and you sign on the dotted line. And that's what we need to sort of get out to people to stop doing that. Mm. You need to step back. It's a pressure tactic. You need to step back. You need to really consider what you're doing because the ramifications may be quite great. Mm. Yep, good advice. What about the solutions? What are the the action steps, the quick wins that our listeners can have when they're trying to navigate this part of a purchase process? You've just said there, make sure you get some good advice from a qualified strata lawyer. Anything else? But I think but even before you go on the journey of purchasing a property, you know, there's a number of websites now, especially government websites that have got some really good information and educational tools in relation to owning mm. um, a lot within a strata scheme. So I would definitely go and have a look at that first because mm. you do have responsibilities and they're legal responsibilities that flow. You cannot simply buy the little apartment and and then sort of, you know, shut out the yep. rest of the world in relation to your scheme. Yep. You, you know, you need to be involved in the scheme. You should be voting on the decisions that are being made because you are a part owner in that whole development. Mm. You are not just the owner of the little lot and can isolate yourself away. You are buying more into something bigger than that. And you need to be really aware of that, that there are legal responsibilities that flow from owning a unit or a lot within this particular property structure. Yep. So that's really important know what you're getting yourself into, get some advice, educate yourself in relation to your responsibilities and Mm. what roles you could take within that particular property environment. Then you do need to do some research on who is going to be your lawyer when you find your property that you Mm. want to buy. Mm. You know, have them all tiered up because especially if it's something by way of auction and you need to get legal advice very quickly, you need to have someone or a couple of people teed up because you may get a contract on the Friday or Thursday before the auction on the Saturday and you want you want some advice and mm. sometimes people can't just drop everything at a, at a minute's notice to give you detailed advice. So you need to find out who's out there in your particular area that deals with strata schemes or is in a firm with people that are strata specialists at least. You need to do your homework and have those people already teed up. Find out how much it costs to undertake the conveyance, how much it costs to do the due diligence around being an owner in a particular scheme. Have that all ready so that you are not at the mercy of real estate agents who will give you false advice. So Mm. do your own research before you even start looking for a property in the market. That would be my first or a couple of first things that I would say. Make sure that you get someone who's very experienced in in these particular areas and definitely, you know, make sure that you have put money aside for your legal. Yep, that you're realistic about what that's going to cost. That you're really realistic about the costs associated with buying a particular property. It's very important. Yep. Excellent. They are some great tips. Now, Nicole, I ask all of my guests who come on this show, what books have had the greatest impact on you and why? 
Well, I am a little bit of a fan of the Ken Follett book. Ah, so yes. The Earth Full of Giants. Yes, All good reads, of, good stories. They're great because they're just so well researched from a historical yeah. point of view. <laughs> so involved in the stories. It's great. I learned so much from him from a yeah, historical point your history, of view. That's your, your history yeah. education. <laughs> yeah, so they're, yeah, they're probably my favourite ones at the moment. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm, I'm always interested to hear from academics what they read in their downtime. And we've had a few academics on the show and um, – Often I get uh, academic research papers. They're telling me that that's what they're reading. And I think, no, yes. you should have a break. Give yourself some something a bit lighter. So I'm glad well, to hear that, that you're into that the Ken Follett. That is true. That is true. It's, it's rare that I do get to sit down. It's usually oh, over the yeah. Christmas break that I get to read these sorts of books. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I know it's at such a busy time of year for you. How do our listeners find out more about you? And is there anything else you want to add before we wrap up? You can definitely contact me through all my information on the Deakin University website. So you can just sort of go on to Google and Deakin University and then put in any research or any area that you're interested in learning a little bit more about or who's researching in that area at the university. I also have LinkedIn. So you're welcome to jump onto LinkedIn if you're on there. And I'm also at a lot of different conferences around the country. So um, Mm. you'll probably see my name come up on different conference sites here and there. Yep. So that's probably all I have to say at the moment. But I just think, you know, really undertaking some research and getting to understand what you're getting yourself involved in right from the get-go is really, really paramount. Yeah, I was just thinking there on that note, learning what Strata is. I think so many purchasers buying in for the first time don't really understand what the structure of a strata scheme is, how it works. Uh, And just jumping on Google and saying what is, typing in what is strata in New South Wales, in Queensland, in Victoria, and even episode one, way back at the beginning of this podcast, that was the title of that episode, what is strata? And you've got me there for about 15 minutes or so explaining to you the basics of strata. So if you're jumping into this podcast midway through and you're looking at getting into a strata property for the first time, Time or buying another one and wanting to be a bit more informed, jump back to that first episode, episode one, what is Strata? And I think that would be a really great place to start. Yeah. And I think the more people that are educated and get more involved in their Strata schemes, mm. the better Strata schemes will become. Absolutely. You know, being very clear about understanding how they work, that it is a communal property type, that you're there to govern your job as mm. lot owners is to govern the scheme. Mm. And it is a big responsibility and I understand that it is, but it can be really great if like-minded people can come together and make really good decisions about their property. Mm. It can work well and I have seen it work well, Yes, but it all comes back to being educated or educating yourself about what you're getting involved in. I think that's really important. Yep. Excellent. And what a great note to end on. Thank you so much, Nicole. Pleasure. Anytime. Thank you for listening to Your Strata Property, the podcast which consistently delivers to property owners reliable and accurate information about their strata property. You can access all the information below this episode via the show notes at www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. You can also ask questions in the comments section, which Amanda will answer in her upcoming episodes. How can Amanda help you today? 